What is up, Jammies? Season two, we're back. Welcome to another episode of Ricky's Ram Jam presented by Barefoot Wine. Ooh, does it feel good to be back? The energy is great. The Rams head to Seattle for week one on Sunday. Football is here. I have an amazing guest joining me today. You may have heard of him. He's, uh, let's see, a Rams legend, a Super Bowl champ. Uh, he does a little TV show. What's that called? Oh, Amazon Prime TNF. Andrew Whitworth is joining me today, and I am so excited. How is everything going with you guys? It's season two. The preseason is behind us. I've been there at SoFi having a blast, filming some great content with kids. So check that out if you get to SoFi this season. Come find me in AA Plaza if you have kids. If you don't, we can still chat, but like more interested in interviewing your kids. So bring them there in like a fun, hilarious way. You got to check this out. I'm having so much fun. The season is here, like I said, feeling so good. So excited, so excited to be back, back with you, Jammies. This is great, but enough about me. Let's just get into it because like I said, Andrew Whitworth is here. How's How it going? Doing? I'm good. Good, how are you? Do you got barefoot in your in your coffee cup here? Yeah, come on, I'm, I'm ready. Let's yeah. do this, why it's not? It's like very morning show-esque. And I always wonder if they do have like their wine of choice, which mine would be barefoot, obviously like sitting there ready or if it's just water, you know what I mean? Yeah, probably most of the time it's water. My yeah, guess. I guess, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's definitely water in, in mine too, for <laughs> sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, first question off the bat, was it harder to win a Super Bowl or sit up on the dais for Amazon Prime on TNF? Oh man, uh, you know what? I, I think the Super Bowl probably uh, took a lot of years to be ready for yep. uh, physically. Um, but you know, stepping on that desk the very first week, all the, you know, probably being on the road in the sense that we're a traveling circus, as I always call us, you know, we're in the arena, the fans, the lights, you know, you forget about a lot of things that happen in pregame when you're a player, cause you only run out the tunnel and play. So when you're in the middle of talking on a microphone and there's people screaming and the lights completely shut off and the music for the intro start, it's like so many distractions. It, it was more nerve wracking than I thought I would be, um, yeah. but it was so much fun. I, I, I had an amazing year. It was, I, I couldn't enjoy it more and love what I'm doing more. Do you think the TNF like travel schedule was more rigorous than traveling with the Rams every week? Um, I think just because it's late at night. Yeah. And in the sense that like you don't get offset till probably midnight or one o'clock and then you're back to your hotel. And for me with the kids and everything, I want to be home when they get home from school. So I uh, most of the time, you know, either slept an hour or so or just didn't sleep, went straight to the airport got on the first flight back home to get home and, and get my rest before the kids got home. But so that part was a little brutal at times for sure. Once you're like 15 weeks in, uh, you're pretty tired, but it was a lot of fun. I, I, I couldn't uh, have chosen a better thing to do my first year out. I, I loved it and uh, have such a passion for it now. But, you know, I still say NFL travel, uh, how you feel after a three hour game getting on a plane from East Coast to West Coast is pretty brutal. I think it's still so insane to me because we, you know, we talk about how football players have to have their bodies in the best shape ever. And we were talking before the show. It's like what you can and can't do just after a long day, how I would go to unwind. Yeah, barefoot. I'm looking at you after like a long day. You play a game and then instead of going to a hotel to sleep and then maybe leave in the morning or whatever, you guys get on the team plane and fly back. And so it's like you're flying over like that just blows my mind. It must be hard for your for your body. Yeah, I mean, you think about it. I always laugh when I hear people talk about time change. Like, oh, I had to go have this meeting in New York or whatever. And like, you know, I spent a night there and had drinks and went to dinner and I flew back the next day or two or whatever. I was only there two days, you know, so now I'm all off. I'm yeah. like, well, okay, in the NFL, you literally practice Saturday morning, like a walkthrough, change clothes, get on a plane. You know, in our case, you bust two hours to LAX. Right. Get on a plane, fly five hours to New York get there late at night, wake up the next morning, play in a game, bus back to the airport, fly back six hours, bus back an hour and a half to the facility, like time change and travel. Like, and then the next, th next day you're lifting and working out and ready for the next week. So, right. uh, you're pretty immune to time changes and those kind of things. I mean, it just becomes your norm. You talked about, you know, talking with these, with these young guys. So you did some preseason analyst, um, work with the Rams as well. And then you're here now, like what is your unofficial capacity with the team? How has been sort of mentoring and taking some of these young guys under your wing? Well, I think really just talking with Kevin and Les and Sean and Tony and everybody in the building, even Reggie and, 
you know, the, the crew. It's just, you know, everyone on staff really just conversations there. You know, I, I became a player who at my age, you're closer with all of them than you are really the players just because of your age. That's, you know, who you kind of have more life experiences with and right. similar. Um, you know, it's just talking with them. It was like, hey, we feel like we're better, you know, when you're around and, and you want to be a part of the program. And, you know, obviously you're so close to a lot of these guys and mentor and train and work with a lot of them already, even when you played and then now. So, you know, it's just being around as much as I can, you know, with my schedule still, obviously I'm busy and, and also raising my own kids and I'm coaching all their sports, which is a lot of fun. Um, so I just try to be as, around as much as I can, you know, whether it be just conversations with guys, like something they're dealing with with an injury or some way they're trying to improve themselves as a player um, or just here to, you know, I'm a, I'm a physical touch person. I believe in it. So like give a guy a hug or pat a guy on the back or, you know, shake their hand and look them in their eyes and, and tell them I believe in them, you know, whatever I can do really to just be around, you know, and, and obviously with Sean and some of them, you know, just some of my best friends in life. And so I, I want to be around as much as I can to help. Yeah, absolutely. So we're just days away from the season opener um, in Seattle. So that playing in Seattle is is always a fun time. So I'm really looking forward to, the, to this game. The Rams have a different looking O-line than we have in the past. It's been, um, I would say it's it's young. It's a young group. We went through a lot of shifts last year. What impresses you about spending time with this O-line so far? Well, I think there's a lot of things just from, uh, you know, we keep saying human. I feel like we're repeating this. But from the human being standpoint, there's a lot of things to love about these guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, great, great group of guys. You know, and that's a great place to start. But I think the other cool thing is, like, you look through life, really, adversity and, and moments you go through really define who you end up being a lot of the times, you know, maybe not in the moment, but a year later, a year down the road, you, you learn, you know, and, and you scar up from those moments and they develop you. And I think you look at this group last year, you know, the injuries were out of this world. I mean, NFL record type injury loss, right? Um, so to think where they are now, the good thing when an offensive line experiences something like that is, is lots of guys get to play. And now this year, you have a lot of guys on this roster who have all played significant snaps, even if it's not a lot of snaps. They've at least gotten a, a test of the waters, as I right. say. Like, they know what it's like to play NFL football and have to show up on Sundays and play well. So I think besides the fact of, like, they're a hardworking group, I think Ryan, you know, Wendell has, has done an awesome job. Wendy's, you know, tremendous. His attitude, his personality, just who he is is yeah. so great. Um, I think that's going to be a great reflection of who they are. Um, but also I think they're all hungry and they've all tasted it just a little bit and they're all trying to prove themselves. And then there's Rob who, you know, big heaven Stein, who's just the leader, the, the, you know, he's their rock and, and what a guy, what a human being, uh, you know, talking about a guy who's tough and comes to work every single day, you know, a weekly rhythm, uh, and routine that never, never gets faded by anything positives, right. negatives, you name it. He's going to keep fighting for his team. Um, you know, he was the lone man standing last year. I look forward to them, you know, seeing like wherever they'll start. To me, it's more about who are they in November and December and what do they become? And right. I think that's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, the Rams have one of the youngest teams in the NFL right now. Um, what when you look at a young team like this, a lot of people some say, you know, it could be inexperienced or, you know, they don't really know what's going on. But what about the energy and and how a young team like this can come together to like what you said in in November, in December, like that energy of this team right now. Yeah, well, I think, you you know, you've heard Sean McVay say this. Um, I think coaches said this a lot. And it's one of my favorite sayings in the world. The truest measurement of performance is consistency. Right. Right. Over time. And so that's what I mean is like there's this positive energy. I think, you know, you talk about the offensive line, you talk about the secondary, you name the group because there's a lot of young groups yeah. on this football team. Right. Outside edge rushers, you name it. Um but the energy is great, but it's about how consistent and, and can it sustain? Because here's the coolest thing about football is that football is played in these three hour windows and we can talk about football. I myself on Amazon and Thursday night football, we, we can talk about football all we want. We can talk about perceptions. We can talk about what we think is going to happen. But the only people in control of that three hour window are the guys who get to put a helmet on and go play. Right. And that moment, if they continuously bring that energy to it, and that relentless spirit that like whether we get our wheel broken that day and somebody beats us or we come out on top, Monday I go back to work with the same energy. Tuesday I go back to work with the same energy. And I stack block on block on block. That's what I mean by what's going to be fun to me is to see who is this team 
come November and December, if they can apply that energy, that enthusiasm, that youthfulness to play this game and excitement and say, all right, we'll, we'll find a way to week in and week out, find that and bring it to the game. Who they develop into is going to be fun to watch. Yeah, that's awesome. I love talking about this this young team and this this transition is gonna it's gonna seem poignant, but it's it's not. I'm not saying anything. But Matthew Stafford is going for his 15th season opener. Still young, still super young, of course. But you've talked before about how eager he seems like to get this season underway. What excites you watching Matthew for season 15? Well, I think one, I mean, just who he's been from his time in Detroit um, to here, just, just uh, you know, at an absolute calm, like uh, you know, unmovable, really. Like, he is who he is. He's going to come to work. He puts in the time, the effort. I mean, I try to get him on the golf course in the off season, and it's <laughs> like if it's a day he needs to throw or he needs to do X, Y, and Z with the kids and, and Kelly, it's like no chance. Like, he, he you know what, and, and I love it because it's like for me – I like, dude, that that's, you know what, I, I wish I was still playing because I love that kind of thing. I love to see somebody who's dedicated to being great at what they are and right. what the, who they want to be, you know, yeah. and what they do. And so he's that, you know, he's the epitome of it. And so I think that's why he's such a great example for this young team is that, you know, Stafford, it's not about talk and hoopla and perceptions and all this. It's like every day he's coming to work and he's finding a way to get better. And he's going to be the first people in this building in, you know, year 15, you know, regardless of these guys who think they come in early in year one, like he is that every day and that model of consistency of how he works and what he strives to be and the dad he is and the husband he is um, in every facet of his life, he's chasing, trying to be great. And, and I think to me, what a great example for these young guys to be around and see every day. Yeah, absolutely. It was so much fun to watch him during training camp this year, too, because you could feel his energy. It just like. Yeah, he's got a really... confidence right now that I love. I yeah. mean, I, I came in the building uh, a couple weeks ago right after they scrimmaged with the Raiders and, you know, I expected after a long scrimmage practice like that, you know, guys are exhausted, kind of a little down, not from like the day, but usually you're just, you know, it's Tired. like the energy, the adrenaline drops. Right. And he walked through the training room. He had like big smile and just this uh, you can just a twinkle in his eye. Sometimes you can just see this twinkle. You know, he's not Santa Claus, but he does have a <laughs> twinkle in his eye that you can be like, man, that's that. You know, Kelly, I think, always jokes about it on her podcast and, and our Instagram about, you know, his, his little winks and stuff like that. But he does. Sometimes he has this like twinkle in his eye where you're like, ooh, he's excited. And I could see that like he, he has this excitement like he's he's ready to get going and, and just get after it and remind people who I am. Yeah, no, I love seeing that, too. And it was it was a really fun off season. I just like cannot wait for the season to get started. If you could be a fly on the wall in any position group this week, like which room would you want to sneak into and why? Oh, man. You know, I, I've had a lot of fun. Obviously, I've been here, you know, Sean and, and the coaching staff and Kevin and them have given me the blessing to be around this offseason. And I got to get a chance for me as a lineman do things I never really got to experience. So I sat through the wide receiver meetings and the offensive, you know, passing game meetings, trying to learn myself, like as I'm covering the game more about the X's and O's from that perspective than just as a lineman. And then, you know, I would go from that to the defensive meetings and I'd sit through the secondary and learn about coverages and techniques and, you know, everything that they're teaching them how to do and the vision they use their eyes on defense and alignments and checks and all that good stuff. So right. it's a lot of fun for me to learn. Um, so having been around in a lot of the rooms, I've been in almost every room. I sat through every position group. Um, you know, I'd want to be in the DB room. Really? Because, okay. You know, listen, that that's a fun group. DBs, one, they're always talking and right. they're the most confident people on the earth. Like if we any of us could ever bottle up the confidence it takes to play as a corner in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, you can't second guess yourself. You can never not have confidence because right. you're doing something that I still think is one of the hardest things in athletics. I know we talk about like quarterbacks and reading defense and all this thing, but like to think you go look at the DK Metcalfs of the world and, you know, Devontae Adams. Think about running with that guy, having, you know, yeah. some general idea of what they're doing, but being able to stop and start and keep Cooper up Cop. with. And I mean, it's just it's insane. Yeah. Right. I mean, you watch Cooper break guys off. It's like, how do you prepare for that? Right? No, my ankles hurt so, watching him. To me, the confidence you have to have in that room, sitting in there and just hearing the chatter and the talk and when they're installing stuff and the confidence they have and the energy they have. I got a chance to be there when they would share kind of intimate things of like, you know, we had just some days where we talk about things that are important to you and stuff. So uh, I have kind of a soft spot in my heart listening to those guys talk about the game and their passion for it and those kind of things. Uh, plus, they just they bring so much juice. So yeah. I love energy. I'm an energy bus type guy. I mean, I drive my, you know, 
whole crew of kids and all their friends to school in the mornings during the week. So I'm like the DJ in the car. <laughs> so it's playing? all about, in, oh, we play everything. So what I do is every kid we pick up, yep. all seven they of them. They have like a walk up song. I have, I make them give me a song every morning. So we add it to the list. So that way we have a year long playlist. I love right? that. So we got everything you can think of from T-Swift, you know, the Swiftiness to Drake it. to old school rap, you know, like something they've just heard. And they're like, oh, that morning, you think about it, like that morning you wake up and you're like, oh, I heard this song. I want it. So we add it to the list. And then that way we have this curated playlist for the whole season. Juice is up. Energy's up. We come, you know, we get out to school. At, you know, all open seven. The what are you driving? Energy's up. Oh, man, listen, I had to, I, no more cool cars. All no. Right? I, I, it's ever how many people you can fit in a vehicle. I'm real close to a bus <laughs> or like a massive sprinter van. I'm like, just one more family joins the carpool and it's, it's over, over with. I'm, yeah. I, you're going to see some, I'm going to go get some kind of old school bus and we're do something cool with it. But to me, that's what it's about. Like that energy that you bring, like to me, it's obviously something I make a point to the kids to just have them walk out my car. And there's this positive belief in themselves and energy and family that they feel when they get out of the car. That. Um, that DB group is like that. That's how they feel. Right. And they go off to go cover whoever it is and do their things and, you know, communicate across the secondary. But they walk out with that energy and confidence together. And to me, that's the same thing. And, and that's what makes it so fun to be around them. So that would definitely be the room I'd want to be in. Offensive rooms suck. It's way too serious. <laughs> I mean, it offensive rooms serious, is yeah. just like X's and O's and seriousness. Like nobody wants to listen to Sean talk about <laughs> schemes. Like that's boring. Okay. Nobody wants to listen to the QB coach talk about your coverage progressions and all this type. Like that's boring. Okay. You want to go in the DB room where it's like, dude, this dude won't catch a ball on Sunday. That's, that's it. You know, yeah. and it's like, tackle intercept bat like we're they're just naming all the things they're going to do and it's like the most fun room yeah that sounds awesome um if you were to give sean some advice on balancing a newborn and football like what have you what would you say what have you given him have you guys talked about it uh yeah i mean we've obviously been really close he's been you know we've been a lot of vacations together sean and v and, and melissa and i and the kids and everything else so They've seen kind of what's important to us as parents and, and uh, you know, obviously they have their families as well that they've gotten to learn from and, and I know how, you know, close they are to that. And so they have plenty of people in their life, you know, and I, I know obviously the relationship with him and his wife and everything else. So, it, you know, they have plenty of people in their life to lean on for that. I think the most the thing to me is, is I think that takes care of itself a little bit when you're wound the right way. And Sean and V are definitely, you know, wound like that, um, I think. Bronk and Sean, that, that'll be seamless because honestly, if anything, I think you'll only provide boatloads, just insane amounts of perspective. And when you get that and you're, you know, you're the type of people they are where you're just chasing, you know what, trying to be better at whatever it is you do and trying to lead people and, and all these type things that Sean's always involved in. Um, and then you add some perspective of something like, man, you, you gave life to and you get to raise and mold. I mean, coaching and parenting and raising people and being a leader of something that they're all pretty similar Definitely. if you really just look for the things that are similarities. And so um, I think, you know, it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to honestly see their faces when that happens, because that's my favorite part. Every player that I've ever helped, like when they were having a child or going through that experience, I mean, the most exhausted and the most satisfied you've ever been in your entire life. And uh, I think it's going to be really fun for them. So I can't wait to watch. That's awesome. Well, before I let you go, I do something called the Ram Jam, which I ask all of my guests the same three questions, rapid fire style. And I'm switching it up from last season. So Jammies, I'm sorry. We're, this is the debut of the new questions of the okay. Ram Jam for this Ram season. Ram Jam, let's do okay? it. Okay. If you were about to have your last meal on earth, what would it be? Last meal on earth. I mean, it's a tough one. Like your last supper. I know. It, so it, it really goes. Yeah, there's. I'm a genre person. I, I hate being favorites because I don't like disrespecting. Genres. Okay, I totally I respect like that. But you groups. have you have okay, so one, hour, groups, one on, hour. You have to put together your plate. Okay, so I can do both if I wanted to. Yeah, you, this is this is the last thing this you're is ever going to gross eat. together. But That's my fine. two favorite things: spaghetti and meatballs. Okay. Okay, like love spaghetti and meatballs. Yep. And then, honestly, if you just said, oh, you can only get one, and this is some people, it's going to be chili cheese dogs. I love a chili cheese dog. Okay. And I'm like, you give me a good chili cheese dog, it's on. Like, I follow LA, like, Instagram food people who go around yep. just looking for, like, who says, I won't ever go there because I don't eat chili, chili cheese dogs anymore. That's but so on sad. a cheat day, I will. Okay. Okay. So I just want to know if it ever happened where I'm just like, I want the best chili cheese dog. You want to know where to go. I want to know where I would actually go if I actually ever went. 
Would you pick okay. like a dessert? Like, cause I, I feel like I'm more of like a picker. And so if it's like, this is my last meal, like I might do a chili cheese dog, spaghetti and meatballs. I might have this. I might have a glass of barefoot wine. I could do meatball sub too. So okay. Like, you know, we might have to do some kind of sandwich combo. Yeah. Like meatball sub, chili cheese. Are dog. you like a mac and cheese on the side dessert. guy? No. no, not really. I'm not a big dessert person. Okay. Not a huge sweets person, but. I, when I say chili cheese dog, I'm talking like 10 of them. I'm not talking like one. Okay. I'm talking like a whole platter yeah. of chili cheese dogs. Yeah. Like Did let's just pile it up like nachos. And there we go. Yeah. I like I like that. I think that's good. If you could live in an amusement park, like shopping center or other fun place, where would you choose and why? Like a Walgreens. Oh, man. Target. Here's you had to the live there. I, I've always loved... I don't know why either, like outdoor malls. Yes, like, I, I like could, the Grove. Like give me like a really cool outdoor mall. Yeah. Right? And I'm, I'm all in on that. Okay. Like probably near the water, like one of those beach ones. Yep. Kind of somewhere near the water. Like I'm thinking of like um, the mall down in Laguna, like Newport area. Yeah. Like, like that. Like, yeah, that's good Give one. me something outside, open air, lots of people. Because I love people and I love like observing and watching. Like I've always said this, if I didn't have kids in a family, I would live like in a big city and like a be at a Starbucks every morning at 5 a.m. Like in the, you know, live in a condo and every morning I'd go down early in the morning, sit at a Starbucks and just people watch for yeah. like five hours. Do you want to be a regular? You want them to be like, Hey, I want to be a regular. I want to have a cup of coffee, sit in the corner and just like observe like okay. people living their life. I love that kind of thing. I like that. What would a collage of your life include? <sighs> oh man. I know deep. That's, that's pretty deep. Um, I don't know. I it's gotta be sports family. You know, faith. Um, gosh, be, meatball I'd, subs. What's that? Meatball subs would definitely be in there. Um, <laughs> Subway, you know, made a lot of business off me as a kid. Um, <laughs> Taco Bell and Subway, literally, probably, you know, part of their success has come from me. Yeah, you know? for sure. That, that was my game when I was nice. a kid. So that would food would definitely be in there. Yep. So it'd be somewhere around, you know, three S: food, family, faith, football. Four Fs. Yeah, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending the time with me. I'm excited. Good luck to you for the season on TNF. We can't wait to watch you and really excited for the Rams to take on Seattle for the season opener. Can't wait to get the season started. I can't wait. Me either. It's here. Finally. Let's go. That does it for this week's Ricky's Ram Jam. And wow, I am pumped up for Sunday. It cannot come soon enough. Keep your eye out for TNF all season long where you can watch our wonderful guest, Andrew, steal the show. All right. Let's play some football, shall we? Let's ram it.